David Wilcock is, is a really stellar individual, as ed, everyone here knows. And we, we thank him very much for being who he is and for putting himself in such a dedicated place to serve humanity with his life. And, and we honor him for that, and we, we um, stand right at his side, okay? Um, so that doesn't mean we agree on everything or how it will roll out or this or that. But in, in the main, we agree, all right? And, and, uh, and we're very happy to, to present him here today. David Wilcock. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. All right. Uh, we do have... Welcome to the Vortex. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Matty Clare. I welcome you to the to my show. Welcome to the Vortex. And uh, today we have um, the first uh, show for 2008. Very, very well, uh, welcoming, uh, very special guest, uh, 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 Winfrey. And I like to have him introduce himself. Well, what, is what am doing? I doing? That is a good question. Um, if you really sum it up. I mean, take like the overview, and it's taken me a long time to have the courage to say it, but I'll say it like it is here. I am a representative on the earth plane for those sources on the other side that mankind has thought of as God throughout our history. And I've written a book. I do conference calls. We do planetary healing sessions, and I've kind of learned how to be um, an intermediary for the energies. This is not about religion. This is not even about anything that is familiar to most people, except that a more simpler way of translation. So I have a very sophisticated understanding for how the other side relates to this side. I, I have to tell you, I am so pleased to have you say it this way as you told, because it's exactly the way how I have seen it. Mm -hmm. So we meet already on that <laughs> point extremely, and I think the world needs it mm -hmm. to get all these religions sum it up, mm -hmm. because it doesn't matter how we name it, on the end it comes to that energy source. Yes, it does. And it's exactly what you're connecting, what I understand. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really welcome that you actually stand back and it's simple. Mm -hmm. And then It took me a while to have the courage to say it that way. I used to say I'm an author, I wrote a book, or I'm a musician, I do this. But, you know, it's like I might as well say it like it is. And then whoever's listening... I hope they will test me. I hope, because I say it, the worst thing you can do is believe it, because you shouldn't believe it. If somebody says something like I'm saying it, you shouldn't believe it. You have to test it. You have to see what in the world would make a guy say something like that. You know, I'm not an evangelist that's standing on the corner and said, this way I get saved. It's no different. I mean, I had the circumstances of writing a book, starting to write a book in the year 2000, it's entitled The Reincarnation of Edgar Cayce. And that book makes the case that Edgar Cayce, who was the most famous psychic prophet in history, is reincarnated and back in a body. And then it, it brings forth the message from who was speaking through Edgar Cayce, who has identified itself in my book as a group soul, and that they're composed of graduates of this realm. Pe many people who've studied spiritual things are familiar with the term getting off the wheel of reincarnation. 
But where do you go when you get off the wheel? What happens then? Well, one of the places people go is they join this huge group soul conglomerate made of billions of individual souls that probably existed from the beginning of our universe and every planet that has population. One of the places is to graduate into this group soul, which then acts as a helper for planets and populations at lower levels. And it was this group's soul that was talking through Edgar Casey. It was this group's soul that's speaking through the young man who I wrote the book about. And um, they're explaining in my book what's happening on our planet from a celestial perspective that um, we can't figure out on our own. And therefore, that's why I say you can't even believe it. As I was writing the book, it, I couldn't believe it. It was like Star Wars. It was like science fiction. And then, while I was writing the book, two years into it, I had the experience where I realized they were paying attention to me. <laughs> I thought I was writing the book like I was a scholar, you know, and I was going to just study this guy. And then what happened was they started coming in my dreams, and I started getting messages. I had people around me, personal relationships, that suddenly started communicating to me and identified that they were them <laughs> talking through people. And I said, am I going crazy? Is this really happening? Uh, how do I put... First, when it first happened, when it first started happening in 2002, it's actually kind of a funny story. I was taking a drive with a friend of mine from Los Angeles to Portland, Oregon. And I was writing the book, and it was raining. And we did a prayer of protection for the rain. And at the end of doing the prayer, I looked up and I said, so does anybody want to talk to me? And she answers and says, we're here. What are your questions? And I said, she must be joking. She knows I'm writing this book. So I'm playing along. I ask some questions. And after 10 minutes, uh, she says, that's the strangest thing that ever happened to me. And I didn't know what to make of it. I didn't know who was talking to me. I didn't know if she was crazy. Well, we went to Portland, and we were staying at a hotel in Portland. And I said, do you want to try that again? And she said, okay. And I took a tape recorder out, and I held the tape recorder. And again, I did my opening line. So does anybody want to talk to me? And again, there was an answer. And I'm having, they said to ask them questions. So I said, how come this person can do this? And they said, she's from another dimension. She came here to bring these messages forth, and we'd like you to help her feel grounded. And then I said, how do I know she's not making this up? How do I know she's not schizophrenic? How do I know, you know, who are you? How do I trust this? I said, can you guys predict a newspaper headline? And they said, no problem. They said, watch for this headline Memorial Day weekend, which was in two weeks. And